How's it going, everybody? Andrew Zarian here, Wrestling Observer Live. We're here every day, Monday through Friday, 3 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. on Saturdays with Jim Valley, and Sundays with me. Happy Sunday, everybody. The, the, the wrestling news just doesn't stop. I say it every week. It's like my catchphrase now. Boy, we got a jam-packed show tonight. Uh, a lot going on, obviously. We're still talking about CM Punk. The draft started on Friday, the WWE draft. Some interesting moves. You can kind of see what's going on. A new title debuted on Raw. Triple H debuted a new WWE championship, which kind of resembles the belt I have behind me, but a WWE sticker over it. Very interesting. I'm very curious what they're going to do here. A lot of speculation whether Seth Rollins is the new champion or the first one or Cody gets it and what happens. Uh, also, uh, Roman Reigns and speculation about when he could lose the title. Jim Valley yesterday on Wrestling Observer Live brought up a very interesting point on if Roman could pass Hulk Hogan's title reign. You know, can he? Yeah, I think it's a very realistic Thing that could happen and I'll go into detail why in the next segment because this is something that I've heard a lot of title uh they they, they kind of want to redo the history books here and I'll, and I'll go into this and when this idea started we'll go down as to who got drafted where we'll talk about dynamite and the move ahead and everything going on there with a, a very busy summer for AEW and Dark Side of the Ring returns on May 30th. We'll talk about some of the shows they have listed here. Looks like it's going to be a great season. A lot to talk about today on Wrestling Observer Live. We'll be right back after this here on Sports Byline, Wrestling Observer Live, Sunday edition. We'll be right back. Wrestling Observer Live, Sunday edition here on Sports Byline. Hey, I don't know if our producers have it, but I don't know if you guys know, there's a convention happening. The FRW convention is happening in Las Vegas. There it is. Memorial Day weekend. FRW online slash Vegas for more information. They're going to be having a meet and greet, Q&A, sweet party, dinners, and a whole lot more. It was a blast last year when I was there. Tony the leader had the sweet party at the Cosmo. It was a blast. But listen, a lot of you guys are going to be out there for double or nothing. Actually, less people this year than last year, which we'll talk about. Uh, these ticket sales for AEW are not that great for uh, TV. But a lot is going on in that company right now. I want to take a moment and talk about this. This is a very uh, hot topic on the internet right now, and we've discussed this a couple times. Jim Valley, yesterday on the show, brought up the fact that, you know, is, is WWE trying to recreate the history books? Is WWE attempting to modernize their list of the greatest champions of all time, which they are. And they've been af actively doing this since, I would say, 2016, 2017, or whenever that universal title came into play. I, I, that was the first time I really heard the conversation about, hey, we need, we need to update the, the legacy here of our titles with newer uh, up-and-coming acts, uh, you know, modern champions that hold this title for an extended period of time to, you know, kind of, Resolidify who are the greatest of all time in this company's history. You know, the conversation goes, it could be, you know, it, it, it's subjective, obviously, right? If you ask one person, it's Shawn Michaels. You ask another one, it's The Rock. Another one is Triple H. Another one is Steve Austin. Another one, obviously, Hulk Hogan. Bruno. The list goes on and on. But I do find this interesting. And Jim brought up an interesting fact. And he said, uh, you know, on his Twitter post, he brought up, could Hulk Hogan, could could Roman Reigns, I should say, surpass Hogan's first WWE title reign? You know, it's very possible. I think Hogan had it for like 1,400 days or whatever, whatever it was. You know, I'm looking at this list here. And, you know, there is, there is an active effort to have longer title reigns. You're obviously not going to hit 2,800 days like Bruno. That, that, that's, I, I mean, it, that would be uh, insane. I mean, you can, you could, if now that you got two titles, this guy could have that title forever and he could surpass Bruno if that's the plan. With no injuries, no stop, you know, they could do this. But 1,400 days is a lot more realistic. Right now, Roman is at 972 days with the Universal Championship and 391 with the world. 
So obviously he has a long way to go with the world title reign, but they're not they're not counting it. They're counting one as the undisputed universal blah 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 blah. Can he hit is he gonna hit a thousand a hundred percent? Can he hold his title for another 400 days after that for a, a year and, and change? I don't know. But, you know, you got Bruno at 2,800. You got Hogan at 14. You got Backlund at 14. You got Bruno again at 12. Then you got Pedro Morales at 1,027, which he'll pass that. So he'll be number four in the list. Then you got Backlund. And then it goes to CM Punk. So, actually, no, it doesn't. Yeah, it does. It goes to CM Punk. So, very interesting. Can, can he do this? One, two, three, four. Can he be the fourth most longest reign champion? Yeah, can he be fifth? Yeah, he could pass 1,200 days. Could he do 1,400 days? It's going to be interesting to see. But they they are trying to update the history books, and I understand that. Do I agree with it? I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that. Because these were organic things. It wasn't designed to happen that way. But, you know, when, when the Universal title was created and you had Finn Balor win that title first and you had Kevin Owens hold it, then you had, you know, uh, Goldberg and Lesnar hold those titles. I think there was a conversation that Jericho could have possibly won that title. There's a reason for that. They wanted to mix up legacy acts, well-recognized acts, with the newer, younger talent to kind of show, hey, look, these guys are on the same level. It's the optics of it. But I do find it interesting. You know, I do find this whole title thing interesting. So the new title debuted on Raw. I still have no idea what they're going to do with Roman's titles. Is he going to only have one title belt? Is he going to walk around with two title belts? Continuing until he loses? Are you going to create a new universal championship? Which I don't like that name. I'm not a fan of that title. I don't like the universal title. I did like when they had a WWE champion and you had a world champion. You could have two titles like that where it's not, you're not the champion of the universe. So so I, I always found that name ridiculous, but I get why they have two of them. But how does this impact the importance of that title now? Will it impact it? I... From what I'm seeing, everybody says that this is just a, you know, now Cody's win of, you know, chasing that title and winning the title is dad never won doesn't mean as much. I, I think obviously it means a lot to him. It means a lot to the viewers, but beating Roman Reigns was a story, not winning the title for me. And he didn't get to do that. And now you've already told us that you're splitting them, which we'll talk about in the next brand, ne next, next split, next brand. I'm, I got a brand split on my mind. The next segment. We'll talk about the brand split and see, you know, where everybody went. And obviously there's more happening on Raw. I've already heard from people on USA side and SmackDown side, you know, Fox's side about, you know, if they're happy or not. We'll go into that also. But I, I, I think this, this, this secondary title that we're seeing is almost a way out for WWE. You know, the Sami Zayn stuff is a great example of the way out. And I'm using hand quotes for people listening. S should Sami have won the WWE Championship in Montreal? 100% if it wasn't WrestleMania season and you had a plan for Roman at WrestleMania. I think that would have been a smart pivot. That would have been a great pivot. You don't get these underdog stories too often. I mean, we have recently, we've gotten a lot of it. We got the Daniel, the Brian Danielson stuff, Daniel Bryan stuff. Uh, that was truly organic. You got Kofi Kingston. That was truly organic. And now you had another chance to do this and to do it better. Each time you do this, you have an opportunity to do something bigger and better. They, they obviously couldn't beat Roman because the story is about Roman, not Sammy. But if you had a secondary title, you could have figured out something. You didn't have it at that point. So this, yeah, this is a way out. And the way that I see this playing out is that, you know, Seth Rollins becomes the first champion, not Cody. Seth and Cody becomes the program for SummerSlam in the summer. And Cody wins it at SummerSlam. And now he's the, he's the WWE world champion and he's on the Raw brand. I don't know if I like that. 
I, I really believe that the story should have been that Cody beats Roman because now you created that guy. He didn't get to do it with Drew and Brock. Unfortunately, no fault of anybody. They had an empty arena match that was, you know, whatever. Now you had this opportunity and you, you for whatever reason, and this really could go into the fact that they have a plan. And this is something that Paul Heyman has said and Triple H has said. This is just a chapter in the story that we're telling. Yeah, we get it. Great. That's fine. But I really hope the main payoff is worth it. At the end of the day, in my opinion, I do think Cody has suffered from not winning that title. Not that it'll be a detriment to his career, but I, I, I think the bigger moment would have been him winning that title at WrestleMania opposed to him winning this secondary title for the Raw brand at SummerSlam or whatever they do. Again, I, I don't have any information that this is the plan, but I could, I could put on my glasses and kind of guess a little bit, you know? You could kind of see what they're doing here. And then maybe the big story becomes, you know, the next year's WrestleMania, that's the match, title for title. If that's the big story here, then hell yeah, I'm into that. Long-term storytelling. Yeah, I got to wait a year to see it, but... How big is that? They're, you know, Roman has his title. Cody has his title. This is the rematch at the next WrestleMania. 100% I'm into that. But we got a long way to go. I wanted to touch on this because a lot of people have asked about it. A lot of people have, have, have messaged me on Twitter about what, what I see happening with this title position. This is how I see it happening. I, whether or not it works out or if it's the right answer, I don't know. But we'll find out. Going to go to a quick break here on Sports Byline. When we come back, we're going to be talking about the draft and a whole lot more. Wrestling Observer Live, Sunday edition. We'll be right back after this. Wrestling Observer Live, Sunday edition here on Sports Byline. Hey, I want to give a little, uh, little. Uh, I guess I want to talk about this a little bit. A friend of the show, Will Washington, uh, essentially announced that he is leaving Fightful. Now, the rumors are not true. He is, uh, as far as I know, he is not going to be known as Bill Colorado here on the Wrestling Observer. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, I, I want to wish my friend a, uh, a happy journey to whatever amazing thing he's doing next. I think Will is going to be playing a very, um, Will, Will has some amazing takes on professional wrestling. I consider him a good friend. He's one of the good ones out there. And I think whatever he's going to do, he's going to do amazing at. So I just wanted to mention that uh, in a little... Uh, Godspeed, Will Washington, wherever you end up and whatever you do. Just don't go by Bill Colorado or, or, uh, or, or Billy Montana or uh, William uh, Dakota. Please, don't change your name. You got a great gimmick. You got a great name as, as Will, William Washington. I'm into this. Very regal of a name. Very much like it. Let's talk about this draft. The draft is back and better than ever. Here is the list of, this is the, the updated list as of today, Sunday. Tomorrow, obviously, we'll have some more names drafted to Raw. But here's the following superstars drafted to Raw. You got the Viking Raiders, Dexter Loomis, Candice LeRae, Maximum Male Models. I hate how they spell their names. This is too insane. There are symbols on letters that should not exist. Natalia, Apollo Crews, Chelsea Green and Sonya Deville, Zoe Stark, and J.D. McDonough. Uh, we also have uh, SmackDown only selections made on SmackDown. Uh, I don't know what this is. Okay, never mind. Raw, we got Cody, Becky, Imperium, which is Gunther, Ludwig, and Giovanni. Matt Riddle, Drew McIntyre, The Miz, Shinsuke Nakamura. Now, I like this. I like that Shinsuke is going to Raw. And I think that there's a lot of unique matches you can see. I really much want to see Shinsuke and, and Cody. That'd be an interesting match. Indy Hartwell, Apollo Crews, Candice LeRae, like I mentioned, Chelsea Green, Sonya Deville, Dexter Loomis, J.D. McDonough, Natalia, Viking Raiders, Zoe Stark, Maximum Male Model, SmackDown. Got the bloodline. But the bloodline, Roman Reigns, Solo Sokoa, and Paul Heyman. The Usos are not here. Bianca Belair. So the Raw Women's Champion is now on SmackDown. The Street Profits, Montez Ford and Angela Dawkins. I, I was... I very much want Montez to have a great singles run in this company. He's very talented. He has great, uh, I mean, great media presence. 
those are key words that I've heard about him. Uh, I, I I do think that he'll have a nice singles run in the in leading after their split split with uh, Angelo Dawkins. Not that I want to see them split, but I think Montez is going to have a really solid singles run. Edge goes to SmackDown. Bobby Lashley, the OC, AJ Styles, Luke Gallows, Carl Anderson, and Mia Yim. I have not seen any of these people on TV. Obviously, AJ's hurt. I hope that they do something here because, you know, the OC and Cody, uh, the different brands, but the OC and, and uh, you know, you have them, you have Judgment Day, you got Cody, there's a Bullet Club thing. There's there's just something you could do here. Damage Control, Bailey, EO, and Dakota. A lot of rumors about Bailey uh, leaving Damage Control. Alba Fire, Hit Row, and Lacey Evans. Did I miss anybody there, Matt, my producer? I think you got them all. Um, I think I got them one, all. Maybe, maybe yeah. One there's I one missed. thing on the uh, so on the AJ Styles uh, coming over. It was kind of a surprise, but I do think that um, he's he's a fresh competitor or a fresh challenger for Roman. So in that regard, that's a good that's a good a good call. And Bobby Lashley. So. Well, I'm looking at this right. Like you know, you got Bobby Lashley, you got Edge, you got AJ right now that I could see here on the SmackDown side. Yep. Obviously, there's going to be more drawings, right? We're going to find out more people going where. But, you know, they, they do need to freshen it up a little bit. And I and I don't think this is a hard split. I know that the term hard split, soft split, I've, I've interjected in the world of professional wrestling. And my I apologize for this because it's everywhere now. Uh, I don't think this is a hard split. Obviously, we know how WWE does this draft. We know how long things stay the same. There will be crossovers. There will be champions going places. You know, you got you got one set of women's ch- tag team championships. You got two sets of the men's, but it's unified. So well, they did something weird. Yeah, they did something I mean. weird um, on the Saturday show uh, yesterday. They made four free agents. So they have Omas, um, Dolph Ziggler, and um, Mustafa Ali, and I think one more person, and I'm it's escaping me that were left as free agents. So I'm assuming if you need help on one show or another, the, they'll just plug them in and yeah. they can be fodder for a feud or something. I don't know. And I, yeah, I expect the what... same with, I expect the same with people like Brock Lesnar, or if there's a very important feud that you want to put together, yeah. you can, you know, the, these things aren't set in stone. And I, and I expect the same from, from AEW, which we'll talk about in the next segment. There's a lot of AEW news. Uh, I, I, okay, fine. You know, this is the draft. This is what they do. I, I don't dislike it, but, uh, I, I, I do, I feel like maybe it's a momentum shift a little bit, you know, it may slow down the momentum here. I thought they did a very good display of how they did it on SmackDown. I did like, I did like RVD coming out with Michael Hayes, which is such an odd couple. And Van Dam had the draft card upside down. It was all <laughs> over the internet. I thought that was fantastic. Planned or not planned. I think that's great. Uh, but you know, this is this is this is what they're doing now. This is uh this is the draft. Very interesting. Dark Side of the Ring season four was announced. The debut episode for the season will be May thirtieth, and I gotta tell you, I very much like this season lineup. I I I'm interested in majority of these. Chris Candido, Tammy, great. Magnum TA, um, unbelievable story. Unfortunately, it's a story of what could have been and what if. Adrian Adonis, Doink the Clown, Junkyard Dog, Marty Jannetty. I, I said this on, on Matt Men, and I got so much feedback about this saying, like, what's wrong with you? Did anybody else as a kid have Marty as their favorite and not Sean? Am I the only one? I can't, like, I was a huge Marty Jannetty fan. I was also a huge Savio Vega fan. I have a very bizarre relationship with my mid-card talent that I'm really into. Marty, I was a big Marty fan. I, 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 uh, anybody else in that that thought Marty was a star of that team? Or it could have just been a delusional uh, four-year-old, five-year-old version of me, six-year-old version of me. Bam Bam Bigelow, the beast from the east. Abdullah the Butcher, the infamous Bash at the Beach 2000 WCW pay-per-view, which uh, I I specifically remember 
waiting to listen to live audio wrestling to find out what happened there. And the Graham family, which is Mike Graham and Eddie Graham. Uh, very interesting season. I, I think this will be very nice. And, and I'm surprised they, 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 they're coming out swinging with this one and, and good for them because it's a very, very good show with a very unique perspective of wrestling. They do a great job at presenting this. I know there was a lot of last season, the tales of the territory. Was that it? Tales of territory. I, I, I was not crazy about it, but they've done a good job here. Interesting stuff. Also on Monday, the big story was CM Punk showing up backstage at Raw. I got a message from uh, our very own Brian Alvarez around 5.20 in the afternoon. <laughs> he goes, do you know anything about this? <laughs> I'm like, I have no idea. And I reached out to someone at WWE, and I asked. I said, what's the deal? And I you know, I said, I'm like, is this true? Is it true? They go, yeah, that's what I'm hearing. So very interesting. Uh, the story turned out that CM Punk was on a flight from Tampa to Chicago. He just happened to be on the same flight as the wrestlers as a WWE talent, and I guess he spent the whole flight with them and somehow decided, I'm going to go backstage. I'm going to go and say hello to some people. And him and The Miz had a conversation. Him and Hunter had a conversation. There was a uh, Tamina in him. There was a photo of Tamina and CM Punk in the, in, the, in the parking lot. And as the story goes, CM Punk and Hunter had a conversation. Maybe, I believe, CM Punk wanted to have something behind closed doors to kind of make amends and uh, Triple H needed to speak to the old man and uh, he did not think it's a good idea to have that conversation and security asked him to kindly leave and he left. It was not, it wasn't done as like he was thrown out of the building or anything like that. I don't want to sensationalize this more than it is, but you know, some of the reasoning is, and the most, most likely reasoning is nobody wants to be accused of contract tampering, especially when you have such a volatile situation like CM Punk and AEW. So was WWE in the right to say, hey, dude, maybe that was not the time to have this conversation? Yeah, I think so. As torrential downpour starts here in New York City, I may lose power here. I don't know. I, I you know, and he, and he also showed up at Impact last night. I was hoping you mentioned that. <laughs> CM Punk showed up at Impact. And you know what? He should have. With the flyer that they put out, CM Punk should have been somewhere in the building. You know, if he there shows up at star a, power in the there's more star power in the audience last night than, than there was. On the, than, I don't. I how the dare you say that about Impact Wrestling? And you know what? Our friend Lance is going to be very angry with you. Mm, and probably. I'm gonna. I have no I'm problem sorry, with Lance. Lance Storm attacking you. I'm gonna. I'm gonna tell him. Please, this guy has no idea what he's talking about. Um, no, Punk was there. Uh, I believe Mercedes was there. And uh, very interesting stuff. Uh, I, I think the next step is IWA Mid-South for him. I think that's where he's going next. And any other indie that he worked in. Warrior Wrestling. <laughs> Warrior Wrestling. Yeah, all the indies. Every, every place that CM Punk ever worked, this is, this is what he's doing. He's showing up there and, and saying, uh, saying hello. Uh, but AEW and CM Punk and Chris Jericho had a planned meeting last Friday, which we'll touch on when we come back from break. This is all very interesting stuff. You know, wrestling, the news kind of sells some of this, and that's part of the new way of consuming professional wrestling is the behind-the-scenes stuff kind of saturates what happens on TV. I don't know if it's positive or negative, but right now it's hot. We're going to talk about this and a whole lot more when we come back. Also, send me your tweets at Andrew Zarian on Twitter. When we come back, AEW and everything going on there. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. We'll be right back after this. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline Sunday edition. Let's talk about AEW a little bit here. I can't believe, by the way, Matt insulted Impact Wrestling like that. You know, and, and Lance listens to this. I got feedback from Lance weekly. He tells me. He smartens me up here. I got a text. I, I'm not even joking. I, I literally get a text message from Lance Storm, and, and I, I absolutely appreciate it because every time he's like, hey, dude, you, you hit the nail on the head with this, or here's why you, I think you're wrong. I love that stuff. Educate me. Teach me. Tell me. I want to grow. You know what? He's going to tell me. This guy's a buffoon. Your producer. I can't wait for that text message in about an hour and a half. <laughs> Let's talk about Dynamite. Uh, some really... Uh, 
interesting moments on this show. There's a lot of things changing here for AEW. Uh, I, I put out a tweet about a month ago, and I said it's going to be a very interesting summer for both companies, primarily AEW. This is a pivotal moment in this, in this company's history. This is the moment, right? This summer. This summer will define the next three to four years of progress or decline. We have a Saturday show starting June 17th. We have the impending CM Punk return on June 17th. We have Forbidden Door. We have Double or Nothing that's coming up, which I have, you know, I got a couple issues with this show. We'll talk about that too. You got all in. You got all out. You got a stadium. There's a lot of stuff happening. And possibly a, 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 a new debut in the company, a mega debut. Orange Cassidy defeated Bandito to retain the AEW International Championship. I think that AEW International title, uh, I, I love what, what Orange is doing. I think this was his 20th defense of this title. He's won, I think he's undefeated this year. They made a point to say that this was his 20th defense for Cassidy. Cassidy would win with Beach Break. They were friendly after the match. The OC put... Uh, OC put his glasses on Orange Cassidy put his glasses on Bandito uh, alright cool whatever Bandito signed he's a great talent to have now this was the match of the night for me I don't care what anybody says Jeff Jarrett defeated Dax Harwood good I want J Double J and everything I become a huge Double J fan I've gotten over the trauma of that theme song and, and his impact run Mark Twain this Mark Twain version of Jeff Jarrett is everything that I need. The strut is great. He, he wrestled. I mean, the level that he wrestled in this match. I, yeah, was he tired? Yeah, of course he was tired. But he was going like a million miles an hour. I loved everything about this. It was too, it was a very, I, I just very much like this oddity of seeing Jeff Jarrett going uh, still on national television in 2023. Good for him. Very much like this. But this international title, to go back to this, I, you know, a little rebranding and making this a second, you know, an upper mid-card secondary title is great. You have two shows now. You could really display this as, as the main event. You know, you, you put this title on. I'm not saying Orange Cassidy is not the guy, but if, if this title was held by a Danielson or a Moxley or a Kenny Omega or, or a CM Punk, I just lost my screen here, guys. Uh-oh. I lost my screen. There it is. Okay. Uh, I, I think that would be great. Listen, man. Put it on Jeff Jarrett. Why not? Ward I have a question. Yes, yes. So do you think that you can safely say that that's now the, the main secondary work rate title? For, I think so. For, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. More than sure. the By the way, can you title? apologize to Lance again? I'm sorry, Lance. Thank I you. Didn't mean it. Yeah, you, you know what? You did mean it, but it's okay. You you will apologize to him. Uh, no, this this is but the hey, now you're, title. But now you're in, you're you're um trying to say that Jeff Jarrett, every, every you you like Jeff Jarrett. So now you're triggering people. So we're even. Listen, mm. how do you not? He looks good. <laughs> he's moving don't. good. <laughs> he's such a he's such a unique. I. I Listen, Carney's not the word, right? I don't want to. I don't want to insult anybody, but he's such a unique throwback act that that just the way he moves, the way he says things, it, it, you don't see it. it. It's it's a very. Uh, I, I listen. I, I'm an, I'm older, turning thirty nine. Uh, a lot of our audience, I I had no idea was much younger than me. I thought I was I was still the young guy here. They've never seen Jeff Jarrett, so. I, I, I think I think the, the, the trauma of that TNA run does not exist for them. Warlow defeated somebody. They never announced him. The guy looked had great gear and had a great tan. Uh, you know, they got to do something with Warlow with Arn Anderson. I hope they elevate him. RJ City made his impact interviewing debut. And how dare they attack RJ City, a friend of mine? Can this guy do more? Tony needs to give him more time. Uh, he was attacked by the BCC, and he was laid out. Sammy Guevara defeated Darby Allen via DQ in the Four Pillars Tournament Finals. All right, let's talk about this. 
What do you guys think of this match as the main event at Double or Nothing, the Four Pillars match? We all know that they were eventually going to do this. And I like everybody involved in this match. But was this the moment to do it? I think Jungle Boy should have been on TV getting some more wins. I think Sammy should have been solidified not as a tag team guy or, or Chris Jericho's lackey. I think he should have been solidified on TV as a major contender. Darby Allen should not have been Sting's sidekick. And he should have been solidified as a serious singles threat for MJF. I, I just feel like you got the right guys here. It's just not the moment. Whether or not you know you you can't do it, or you're going to do this again a couple of years from now, or whatever, I I I just I'm a little disconnected by this. Matt, how do you feel about this, MG? Do you feel I, the same I, way I, as I, I do? I, Honestly, no, then don't don't you know, no, don't blow smoke I, up up my up my uh, tochas here. Okay, well, I kind of I kind of feel like sometimes you're right to a degree, but I also think you got to start somewhere. And I understand they're blowing a pay per view, and they're not having somebody with a a well known name. They're 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 the the goal is to elevate these four at the end of the day, and that is truly what I think they need to do. Go long long run. I get it. I get that long run. One hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I, and but, I like all about, of them. Right, but think about the fact that now you have the second show. They will get more reps going forward. Um, hopefully, because that's the goal is these guys, that's that's your problem. Is these guys just haven't been in uh, top spots and top programs um, leading up to it. Yeah. And now with the second show, you will have that opportunity. I uh, hope so. Of course, that's going to be after Double or Nothing, but um, at least, you know, I think I think there's they had to, they had at some point do this. It, I, I guess the your issue is more of the timing of it. The timing, yeah, the timing is my problem. But you know, you gotta have, you gotta start somewhere. Maybe, maybe you're right there. Uh, Adam Cole addressed Chris Jericho because that's been the program here. JAS attacked Cole. The best friends came out to help. They were not successful, and the music hit, and it was Roderick Strong. Roddy is in AEW. Him and Cole gave had a big hug. He cleaned house. So you got two of these guys. Bobby Fish is not there, obviously, and Kyle is still hurt. So, you know, this is this is a they were eventually going to lead to, you know, Adam Cole and his crew versus Kenny and the elite. Maybe this is a program and a nice little filler for all those guys here until they figure out what they're doing with everybody. Uh, I, I like this. I like that Roddy's there. He's he's an amazing wrestler, uh, and I think it'll only elevate Adam Cole which they need to. They need to elevate Adam Cole. He had a lot of stop and go since he debuted. I think people forget how long he's been there. Adam Cole debuted at the same time as John as as CM Punk and the same time as well no, Punk was a little before. Uh same time as Danielson. So and and really it's been not much with Adam Cole. A lot of stop and go. So I'm hoping that this is this is going to be a nice, consistent run here for him. Because he's another guy. Big name. They could do a lot with. Be in interesting programs. They go from there. Uh, TBS Championship. Jade Cargill defeated Taya Valkyrie. Retained the TBS title. Kenny Omega and Takeshita, which I like this team, defeated the Butcher and the Blade. Danielson was on commentary after he sent that Omega. <laughs> Danielson on commentary said... Omega was out of shape and an amateur, and that Takeshita should be in BCC. This led the BCC busting open Takeshita. <laughs> so, dude, I I hope the match ends up being Kenny and Danielson, because I want to see that match again. Who doesn't? They I I saw it live. I saw it live in New York City at Grand Slam. That it was it was the opening match. That building was on fire for these two. Went to a 30-minute draw, but you know what? I'll take it. And still part of the story that Danielson just can't cut it in the big time, in the big match for a title. He can't do it. 
Very interesting stuff. Rampage coming up this week on the 3rd. MJF and Sammy Guevara take on Darby Allen and Jungle Boy. If Darby and Jungle Boy win, they get added to the main event of Double or Nothing and make it makes it a four-way, which they will. Orange Cassidy, Adam Cole, Bandito, and Roderick Strong versus Daniel Garcia, Matt Mernard, Angela Parker, and Jake Hager. Interesting stuff here. Very, very interesting stuff. You know, they, there's a lot of moving parts and what's going on in pro wrestling. I, I feel like, you know, this is a very pivotal time, especially for AEW, and a problem that they are having here is ticket sales. These tickets are not moving at the rate that they should be. Obviously, a lot of it is market exhaustion. It's, you know, they're, the honeymoon is over, right? Now now it's up to serious business. You got to create captivating television week after week that draws people in, and it can't just be, uh, you know, Kenny Omega facing off against, uh, uh, give me a guy from New Japan, anyone, uh, Kenta or whatever. It, it has to, you got to tell the story week after week and bring you to a pivotal point. There, It's a very different era they're in. And I, I forgot who it was. Somebody, somebody told me, you know, what AEW does great is build these dream matches that you want to see or you didn't know you wanted to see. And they do a great job at it. And I said, give me an example. And they said, think of this match, right? Kenny Omega and Joey Janela. Do you remember that first match that they had? And people were blown away by it. It was, it was a great match. That is a match, you know, if that was a raw match, you would not have really been engaged with it because you would know the end result. But because of the way that AEW presents these matches, you were interested. And I said, yeah, that's great. But at one point, you're going to run out. And we're starting to see that. And I think the Punk punk edition will inject some, you know, more ticket sales, obviously. And I think it's going to help. And I understand why they're bringing it back. Whether or not it's a success, I don't know. I don't have no opinion of that. I'm I'm just going based on, you know, your ratings are slipping a little bit. Your ticket sales are a little slow. You got to do something. And this is a good shot in the arm. Whether or not it works long term or short term, we'll see. We'll find out. I am not no Shadamas. I cannot predict that part. And nobody knows. But very, very interesting time for this company. 60,000 tickets requested for the pre-sale for that stadium show in Wembley. Very interesting stuff. Wrestling Observer Live coming back with the final segment here on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live Sunday edition here on Sports Byline, the final segment of the show. Our producer reminded me, he said, Andrew, you forgot to mention, and you're talking about great matches, you forgot to mention that steel cage match set for Detroit in a couple of weeks between Kenny Omega and John Moxley. That is a hot main event. You know, you want to talk about putting together a really good match for a main event. That's the one. What? Which day is this on, MG? Uh, give me one second. I'll look it up real quick. It's two weeks from now, right? They announced yes. it on Rampage. Mm -hmm. So not this coming week, mm -hmm. the following coming week. So not the third, I guess the 10th or 9th or whatever that day is. Let's find out. What month are we in? Where are we? Who are we? Uh, the 10th, that would be. I think that, that's fantastic. And they're going to have to do more of those. Give me a reason to come out, especially when your competition has the, has the optics of being hot right now. You got to do a little something here. May 10th. May 10th. All right, cool. I'm into this. Very into this. It's a, yes, it's a Wednesday. Thank you. I would hope it's a Wednesday. I would hope they're not preempted for that match especially. But very interesting stuff. I, I, you know, these are the changes they're going to do, and we're going to find out. May 10th is getting very close. The following week, we'll get the announcement of the new show, and then we'll go from there. Guys, I had a blast with you here on Sunday. We're going to be back next week with another episode of Wrestling Observer Live. Do me a favor. Follow me on Twitter, at Andrew Zarin. You can follow the Wrestling Observer also. We're everywhere podcasts are available, and especially here on Sports Byline. Send me your feedback, and we'll do our best to answer it next week. We'll see you all next time on Wrestling Observer Live. Bye-bye.